Hey guys and welcome back to Wiener Wonders. So this video is super duper late. I know um, this is going to be my July reading wrap up and it's already the second week of August but that's life and sometimes life gets in the way of things like filming um, but still I wanted to put this up because I really enjoyed some of the things that I picked up last month. Um, that is to say that I had a very busy month and uh, I only read four books but that's okay. Four books is definitely not bad for my standards. I've long given up on the goal of reading like 10 books per month. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself. We are in a pandemic. We are living in a third world country. We are gonna do whatever the hell we gotta do. Okay, so let's get straight into the books. The first book that I read last month was The Secret Thing by Sharon Olds and this is a poetry collection. It's comprised of four parts and each part sort of fixates on a different difficult time. It does kind of go in this chronological order where the first segment you kind of know that it's not uh, directly from Sharon Old's experience but it sort of fixates on a time that her parents had experienced. So particularly it deals with World War II, there's a lot of violent imagery, there's a lot of um, imagery that has to do with war and in fact um, that section is entitled War. And then you have um, the second section which fixates more on her childhood and how she didn't feel loved or she didn't grow up in a household that was very warm or very healthy. And then um, the third part sort of fixates more on her journey as a mother and um, certain experiences that she has now being in this position to kind of nurture someone else. And then um, the fourth part kind of wraps everything up. and. Um, talks more I guess like about her sort of personal ordeals and I found that this book was just it was so well constructed like structure wise I feel like it's it's one of those books that's really enjoyable to kind of admire for for the neatness of it and that's not to say that like neat is boring I feel like there are some books where neat can be boring but in the case of Sharon Olds I think the thing that makes it interesting even if um, the structure is kind of so straightforward is just that her language is so good it's there's something very visceral about the way that Sharon Olds writes and that's not to say that it's visceral um, and not intellectual it's visceral but still um, there is a certain thoughtfulness to it. There is um, kind of a certain logic to the poem which mm, like for me it just sort of hit that sweet spot. So I really enjoyed that and I found that this was a very haunting poetry collection. The second book that I picked up and probably the book that I spent the most time on last month was Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino and um, these are essays about self-delusion and essays about what it's like to grow up and be a millennial in the world that we live in and I love that because I think Gia Tolentino and I are sort of the same age. Um, she is Filipino-American, she lives in the States, she is an American citizen but her parents are from Manila and um, it's very interesting like to kind of look at that and see I guess that demographic spoken about. Um, it's very interesting. I feel like if you are Filipino and you read this, you will remember someone like from all of her stories. You will be thinking of that like Tito or Tita who lives in the States and acts a certain way. And I feel like Gia Tolentino is just, she has such crisp insight into things. And what struck me the most about this was that there were times when she would write about things that are so personal but there would still be something so lucid and so insightful about the way that she wrote these essays and um, I guess it's rare to see an essay balance the personal, the political, um, the close, the visceral, the intellectual and like all of these different facets of a story so well and to sustain that for like for a pretty long time or like a long volume just it blew my mind and i really really enjoyed this book um i am aware that there is kind of some controversy around gia tolentino like on twitter and i know that there was something with her parents but but i don't know at the same time i'm kind of over cancel culture and at the same time i don't know i feel like it's a lot to kind of ask someone to uh, 
pay for their parents' mistakes. So I still enjoyed this. I still would recommend it. And I think that if you're someone who is kind of um, exploring what it means to be a person in the world right now and what it means to be someone who is woke, what it means to be someone who uh, wants to be politically engaged but is also very much disenfranchised and kind of alienated by certain systems, I definitely think that this is a very good book. And there's also, I mean, a very good book for you to read. I just realized I cut off like mid-sentence. But yeah, it's a very good book for you to read. And um, there were some parts of this that I was just like, oh my god, like, she is talking to me and my people. Like, there's a portion here where she talks about the good old days of Sangha and live journal vlogs. Blogs? Blogs, yeah. And I was just like, what the? Like, I haven't thought about or heard anyone write about or talk about those websites in so long and um, it was really good. It was insightful, disturbing, um, <laughs> sometimes kind of cruel and hard to read but at the same time it was also enjoyable and there was something very relatable and personal about this collection of essays and I left the book really wanting to be more aware of my place in things and just to know more, I guess, about certain social dynamics and certain systems that yes, I am kind of complicit in, but I also need to study and examine for myself. So I would definitely recommend that book. After that, I read Something Bright Than Holes by Maggie Nelson, and this is a poetry collection. It's really, really good. Um, Maggie Nelson wrote this book while she was helping out a friend who was in the hospital and who was recovering from a fall. So the fall had left her friend paralyzed and had damaged her friend's spine. So a lot of it is very contemplative and it's definitely not as conceptual or as rigidly structured as her most famous work, which is Bluettes. Um, this is a little bit more loose, but you can also feel kind of a more raw quality to the poems. For example, um, there's a section of poems where it's just her hanging out near like the drainage area. And there are just so many things that Maggie Nelson does with like the simplest, most mundane things. And I think that's something that I really admire in her writing. Also, I mentioned that uh, the past few weeks or like past month has been kind of an emotional roller coaster for me. And I think that this really helped a lot <laughs> because uh, like reading Maggie Nelson kind of go through these emotional cycles and emotional loops on paper, it just it made me feel a lot better and it really sort of comforted me. Um, and also her technique is amazing and I'm always blown away by the way that she can kind of take anything like a color, um, a texture even like viscosity or um, just a certain detail in the background and she can really kind of turn that into a centerpiece of a poem. So if you enjoyed Bluettes, if you enjoy Maggie Nelson's writing, you will like this. Um, if you're not really sort of familiar with her poetry yet, I think that this might not be the best place to start just because it does take a little bit more getting used to and there is kind of that interruptive factor of the different sections of the book so it's not like bluettes where oh, okay so this is going to be um, a lyrical essay collection about <laughs> different blue things like you can't really wrap it up that way so yeah um i think it's a great book to read if it's not your first maggie nelson book but if it is your first maggie nelson book then i would say just start with bluettes after that um i read a book by my friend Martin. So Martin Villanueva um, is one of the editors of Critica Cultura. It is an academic journal that is released by Ateneo de Manila University. And uh, the funny thing is, Martin is uh, one of the editors of that, but he actually took his MFA in La Salle. And those two schools are rival schools. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> the point is that um, I read Martin's book this month and it's called A Pig Was Once Killed in Our Garage and it is kind of memoir but done like in a very uniquely structured way. So this is a memoir that's told 
in the form of a catalog and the thing that I really enjoy about Martin's work and have always admired about his work is that he sort of prioritizes um, kind of the logic of structures before anything else and I feel like that very clear choice to do that really just pulls the whole book together and I feel like it keeps things from getting too sentimental while also giving it um, a little bit of jarringness where um, you're never allowed to be seeing the story only for the emotion of the story, I guess. Yeah, and he kind of talks about that a little bit where the thing about catalogs is that you can go on and on and when you stop it is kind of this conscious choice to stop and to say that that's enough. And huh, I just really, really enjoyed this. And one of the pieces that's in here, we actually published with Plural Prose Journal, which is a prose literary journal that I used to be on the editorial board of. And it was very interesting sort of seeing this work framed alongside all of the other memoirs and just to sort of think about the construction of the entire book and I really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like it had a little bit of everything where it was sort of set very clearly against the landscapes of the Philippines and Indonesia where uh, Martin spent a big chunk of his childhood but also it was very clearly set in this emotional space that is being remembered so there are no pretenses of something being um you know capital t true or capital t true root of facts it was more like this is my interpretation my memory of this thing but i will present it to you as an artifact of my memory and i really really super duper enjoyed that book and now I guess I'll talk about what I'm currently reading because it is kind of a carryover read. Um, I didn't finish it in time for July, <laughs> for the July reading wrap up because, uh, like I said, life kind of got in the way. But I'm currently reading My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante and I'm really, really enjoying it. So for those of you guys who haven't read this book, um, it revolves around the friendship of two young girls. And uh, the book sort of starts out when they're older and one of them has decided to disappear. And this is something that she's wanted to do for a long time. And these are not spoilers, by the way, because it happens like the first page in. <laughs> so um, yeah, she disappears and the narrator tells us that this is something she's wanted to do for a long time. Like she's wanted to kind of erase herself from the narrative of things, like to get all tea swizzle up in your business. It's like, I gotta erase myself. I'm gonna excuse myself from this narrative. And um, we find out that they had a falling out and the narrator says that no, I'm not gonna allow you to do that or you don't get this victory. So I'm going to write about everything I remember about our friendship. Yeah, and um, at the heart of it, this, this novel is about a friendship and about um, the different intense dynamics and intense things that can go on in friendships. And I, I find that very enjoyable to read. I will comment, of course, in my August wrap-up about how I found this book overall, but I just thought it would be interesting like to kind of talk about how I'm getting on with this book. <clears throat> what happened to my voice? How I'm getting on with this book. Yeah, and I, I'm very much enjoying that. And I think Elena Ferrante writes very well about the complexities of people and how certain social dynamics really affect the way that people make decisions, the way that people are perceived, um, the way that we construct this idea of beauty, and the way that we sort of deal with or grapple with this idea of, of attraction, of who wins, of what it means to be a good person, or a wanted person, or a popular person or a successful person and it's just so good there is kind of like a touch of Gabriel Garcia Marquezness in this in particular kind of got me thinking about a chronicle of a death foretold just because a lot of it takes place in this small Neapolitan town and there are lots of strange characters around and sometimes uh, some figures are 
thought about almost like their mythological figures and I kind of like that, like that sort of blending of magical realism. Although here it's not as pronounced, it's not as obvious as in the Marquez novella, especially because this is told from first person. So yeah, so there definitely is kind of that um, grounding element of the eye. <laughs> Talking about that kind of makes me want to leave this camera and just go into the room and read, which I will probably do after this. So thank you guys for um, watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, please let me know in the comments below what you've been reading. Let me know if you have read any of these books and how you found them. And I'll see you guys in my next video.